day if you can go so why not so why not buy a copy or a clone of the original tool and software uh, well simply put basically they don't work any longer uh, as we just alluded to they're being the, the actual genuine tools are being updated far far too frequently all the connections are now done all in the cloud it's uh, it, you know you've bought by the time you've bought a clone of the original tool it's out of date it's very hard to get hold of the software you know um, to keep yourself up to date um, and um, yeah simply put they just don't really work any longer you know um, again confession time like many other diagnostic texts you know we didn't really start with genuine original tools we've started with copy clone tools you know we've tried them again it gets you hooked it gets you it shows you what is achievable using an actual proper official genuine registered tool um, but again can leave you a bit high and dry you know because sometimes what's actually inside these copy tools isn't the same components and complexities and built on the same boards etc as what the genuine tools are so some functions will work and some functions don't and they're not really be not really designed to work uh, in a workshop environment on a daily basis by com consistently being used and of course, you know, manufacturers have been wise to these and they're starting to block certain serial numbers via device because they know which mach which machines have been copied and cloned, etc. So, yeah, um, as we've alluded to here, you know, it's most VMs, they've moved now to cloud based platforms. So it, it makes them very, very difficult now to keep up to date with the copying and, um, and distribution of up to date software. Yeah, there's there's a few more bits in here, but um, one of the interesting bits was we um, we're dealing with some guys with Mercedes um, a couple of years ago, and then they uh, <coughs> disappeared, and we later found out they had been arrested by Interpol, and they're now in a Russian prison for copying the security crack in Mercedes key encryption software, the back end of Mercedes. So. Yeah, it can be pretty serious, this stuff, when you're going against vehicle manufacturers. As I say, I mean, I think sort of, I'd say probably 90% of these don't work or they're out of date now. There's People will be sat there saying, no, I've got one that works perfectly. But believe me, it's, it's not going to be up to date. It's not going to do the latest security encryption. It's not going to do the latest modules. Um, everybody thinks it's, you know, I've got one that works, but to tell you the truth, they're never quite the same because we've experienced most of them. Yeah, not sure yeah. the cost actually outweighs the actual no. uh, <laughs> failure of a device if it if it fails. You know, you, you, you spend uh, a lot less money on a Chinese clone tool. What happens then when it, uh, when it effectively damages an ECU or the bricks, bricks off, the entire car as we've had? Doesn't yeah. work. Is it really worth yeah. saving that little bit of money by buying a Chinese clone tool? Uh, just, Our experience says not. Not anymore. No, it's it's it did work a few years ago. God, it, it worked really well. But now, I mean, Mercedes are a massive example of this. How they've just completely tightened up their security over the last eighteen months. It's been ridiculous what they've done. But <clears throat> you know, they can't be hacked, and that's it now. Really, people saying, "Oh, I've got versions of it," but they don't do any SA encoding. They don't do anything really in the back end that they should be doing. Um, very, very difficult to do. So, <coughs> we're both going to talk about this. So, OEM tools um, present the best option, but they need regular updating. Um, there's an ongoing usage cost associated with them. The guests give the best option for accurate information guided diagnostics. There are processes to follow to register. With the OEM tools, you have to adjust your business plan slightly to get in line with the OEM policies. Now, we talk about this all day because this is basically what we've done for the past few years. Um, <clears throat> but we'll talk about it more philosophically to start off with. So we're saying basically here that the main dealer technician doesn't really know more than you. What we're saying is, because of the vast complexity of vehicles, it levels the playing field. The main dealer tech and you are only as good as the tools and information and training available. In other words, you need to decide time and money to get on board. Overall, you have your chance to compete if you ever have the right business plan. Now, that sounds a bit bit weird, but we've, as I said, we've been doing this a long time. We have a complete program for people to go through building their business into an OEM tool business. And it starts off with saying, really, look, you know, you're going to have to start to charge people properly if you want to compete properly. 
and you're going to have to dedicate probably one guy in your workshop who will we can train or other people can train whoever can train and you're going to have to accept that you're going to need support because the vehicles are becoming more complex so we'll talk about this in a little bit more depth later on but basically yes oem tools it is known they present the best option but they are tricky um and they're made very very tricky by the oems putting all the processes in place and trying to skate along the lines of block exemption to the nth degree and again this is something that i do um, and look at and shout at the oems or get other people to shout at the oems for trying to break all these policies but effectively as a team here this is what we do we try and get your business in line to get you working with oem tools as well as your aftermarket tools as well as your pass-through tools as well as your remote diagnostic tools we do pretty much everything but the whole point is at the top lies the oem tool where it's been developed every day and costing billions of pounds to develop so we'll explain a little bit more about how you can use that so i'm going to talk about security application block exemption current processes Cermity. So me and I've spelt NAFTAS wrong, I've just realised up there and other things to explain. So not to bore you too much with this. What you need to know first of all what block exemption is. Most you already know, I'm sure. It's a non-competitive law. <clears throat> the law provides competi competition in the automotive it, I can't even say it, automotive industry as vehicle owners have the opportunity to repair and service the vehicles at whatever workshop they feel like, basically, as long as you go by the rules. We adopted block exemption before Brexit, but we've got a lot of work to do because unfortunately we haven't moved it on since Brexit. Even though MBVR block exemption has been extended to 2028, we've still got a lot of work to implement the requirements at a technical level. What that basically means is we haven't pulled all the other stuff over from Europe yet, which will allow us to carry on. So this is a huge bit of work that we're doing at the moment so we can carry on implementing all the bits they've implemented in Europe effectively that's what it means. So the UK government obviously have got a lot more still to do now and have more of an impact now than what we've had when we had the luxury of being in Europe so of course now we're now standing on our own we've now got to fight for our fight for our own rights to repair. So it's, it's a bit of a problem but it's something we're working on and you can understand with Covid Brexit, all the other stuff, it's been pushed to the back, so we're trying to push it to the forefront again. If we don't get this, I mean, put it nicely, we're, we're a bit um, screwed. <laughs> so we, we will do, we'll work on it. Um, how do you currently apply for vehicle data and diagnostic tools? Current process is completely controlled by each individual manufacturer, guided by block exemption. As I say, they skate across the rules and they make it as hard as possible. They generally want you to be a limited company with a VAT number, Use no manufacturer's logos and website or socials. Carry out no remapping, DPF removal. These are basic criteria. All of that is in Euro 5, Euro 6 regulations. So basically what it's saying in there is don't piss them off in any way, otherwise they won't help you. Excuse my French, but you know that's, that's really what they're trying to do to us. Now, the process in the future changes. So we've got something called CIRMI, which is a European-based scheme. And it's a better scheme because it's administered by the aftermarket rather than the vehicle manufacturers. And what this really means, I'm not going to go into it too much because you'll see a lot about this, I'm sure, in the press over the next uh, couple of years, is that <clears throat> it will allow us to control, through a national accredited body, um, you get a license and basically you will get a passport to go on to the OEM portals. You have to be clean, just like on the previous slide with the manufacturers, to get onto those but once you've got your passport i know the rmi and i do talk to kevin finn from the rmi and there's quite a few of guys i deal with in the iaaf like neil patamore etc etc we're all batting for the same thing on surmi but there is a second option to this which is and i've spelt it right this time nastaf national automobile service task force and that's <coughs> currently used by ford it's used in the us it's a us based service effectively which works slightly differently to CERMI because it's controlled by the manufacturers now that could also be applicable in australia and some in europe as i say it depends how it really goes through these talks through 2023 22 23 on how we're going to go with all of this 
the benefits, how, the, the benefits I think of both these schemes are that it's a one application uh, process so it's not currently at the moment like you now have to apply to each individual manufacturer and you have to adhere to their own rules and regulations so just because you've got security clearance for Mercedes does not necessarily guarantee you security clearance for Jaguar Land Rover or BMW this kind of levels the playing field and makes it a one application yeah I mean basically what we're saying is if we can knock a few heads together in Westminster and we can go to the accreditation through the European Union it's going to make our lives a lot easier for everybody and you then have access bear in mind this is not just access to OEM tools. This is access to parts. This is access to information. This is access to wiring diagrams. This is access to absolutely everything. So it's really important that we go through all of this in the next couple of years. Okay, so enough boring about the political side of life. We'll go on to something else. <laughs>